So my name is Dan Golden. Uh, I've been in the digital marketing world for uh, a lot of years, and geotargeting has been a part of everything that I've done uh, on the automotive side at uh, Consumer Guide at Performix. Um, was a was a part of Google. Spent some time doing lead gen before before starting Be Found Online. Um, so a lot of background on on local and, and very passionate about integrating local targeting and localization into everything that everything that we do for our, our clients at BeFound. Um, with me, I'd like to introduce Michael Gardner from Google. Hey guys, my name is Michael Gardner. I'm an agency development manager at Google, and BeFound Online is one of um, a few agencies that we partner with very closely um, to help bring content like this to you about geotargeting and such. Um, I work out of our Ann Arbor, Michigan office. I've been in Michigan my entire life. Quick fun fact is that I own a couple of chinchillas. Um, we'll see if they show up in our presentation today at all. <laughs> all right, so uh, a little more background on, on myself. This is Dan again. I've had the great opportunity to work with some of uh, some very large brands with very different footprints, uh, both in terms of where their customers are and, and how they target locations, whether it's an omnichannel cut. A uh, company that has multiple locations in, in e-commerce uh, versus e-com pure plays that also have localization and, and, and different ways that they look at geotargeting their, their customers and, and segmenting their, their markets. Um, so a lot, of, um, a lot of different experiences that, that I've had. Um, one, of the, one of the steadfast things that I've learned on, on the geotargeting front is that no client has the same needs in terms of how to, how to target and how to prioritize you know, where they're um, where they're geotargeting uh, customers. Uh, a little bit about Be Found Online. Uh, we're a digital marketing agency based in Chicago. Uh, we've got 35 team members and growing. Uh, experience in a lot of different verticals. Uh, focus on the on the paid side in terms of paid search, display, online video advertising, uh, and on the organic side with SEO, social content, uh, as well as uh, local search marketing. Um, so before we get started, wanted to do just a quick poll. Uh, on the audience and, and get a gauge in terms of uh, everybody's usage of, of Google AdWords and, and potentially tailoring some of the content. Um, in terms of the, uh, the audience today, it uh, looks like about half of you are actively managing uh, search accounts within AdWords and half of you are just looking for more information about it. So um, we will continue to dive into that. Uh, so in terms of today's agenda, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of geotargeting. Uh, I don't think we need to beat that drum just because you're attending this webinar, so obviously there's some amount of importance. I um, want to talk about some customer use, use cases in terms of who and where this is important for. Um, we're going to go through a little bit about the process that we go through before we start geotargeting and, and focusing on the data side uh, of, of collecting data to, to drive some of those decisions. Uh, some measurement in terms of how we look at measuring local campaigns relative to um, uh, you know, more of a pure, pure play online measurement. Uh, and then the fun stuff, the tactics and campaign setup ideas uh, that you can take home and implement for, uh, for your clients and for, and for your business. Um, so some other good news before we go in any further. Um, for those of you attending the webinar, uh, we have Chromecast to give away. Uh, so ask a question or uh, respond to a survey, and um, it's limited to the big stack of 20 that we're sharing at right now. Um, and we will, we will happily give you some Chromecast as a, as a thank you for attending the webinar today. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you get a little bit more out of it other than just a Chromecast. So diving in, uh, you know, the importance of geotargeting, why are we, you know, why are we doing this? So um, the one thing, just stepping back, and I'm not going to read the, the stats on here, we'll, we'll be sharing this presentation afterwards. Uh, localization is relevant for every type of business. Um, you know, the, the increased usage of mobile, um, you know, when we look at uh, some of the before and after studies that we've done, um, localization is extremely important. People perform differently depending on how, how far they are from a location. Um, different cities have different propensity to order things online, uh, so we see wide variances in e-com conversion rates. Uh, so in terms of, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to optimize an AdWords campaign, keywords, ad copy, testing. Uh, localization is just one of those one of those pillars uh, that that helps you know drive uh, drive performance. So what you know what we've seen in terms of the campaigns where we focus a lot on on localization, Im improved performance. Um, that can mean a lot of different things. Usually it's a uh, improved return on ad spend or a lower cost per lead. Um, but at the end of the day, search is about customer relevance. So um, the more relevant we can be for local customers, uh, the better off. 
the better the campaigns are going to perform and, and you know, the more relevant leads to higher click-through rates, leads to better quality scores, uh, and overall a best, you know, a better customer experience. Um, another piece is just eliminating waste and uh, there's oftentimes a lot of money spent in areas that are not, uh, not driving performance. Um, and trimming the fat and allowing you to focus those budgets on areas that are driving better performance uh, is another way to, uh, to, to turn this into uh, dollars. One quick thing to add from, from Google's perspective is um, of all queries that we have, which is a lot, one in five are, are local searches. And so it's hugely important to be present when consumers are, are searching for, for you and your business. So in terms of use cases, uh, obviously a local business geotargeting is going to be very important. Um, Multi-local companies that we've worked with uh, where you, know, you have multiple locations and, and a very complex geo footprint, uh, highly relevant. And one area that doesn't necessarily uh, correspond to, to local targeting in a lot of people's minds is uh, e-commerce. And even, even online lead gen companies that we work with that uh, are not optimizing for, to drive store traffic. Uh, but there's still a lot that can be done on the localization side to, to drive results and, and make those campaigns more more relevant. And Dan, can you briefly, you know, we saw both local businesses and multi-local businesses on there. Can you briefly describe the difference between those two? On the e-commerce side, uh, which is often not thought of as uh, as relevant for, for local targeting, you know, omni-channel advertisers that sell online as well as in store. Uh, lots of different performance uh, that we see when you're in market versus out of market. So in a lot of cases, if you're marketing where you have stores, you want to have hybrid messaging that's pushing to stores as well as calling out e-commerce. Uh, and when you're out of market, you want to have separate ad copy that really talks about online and, and not necessarily pushing to store. Um, market level performance, you know, you see very, you know, very wide differences in terms of how small markets versus large markets perform uh, and segmenting those uh, so we can push the areas that are performing best. Um, day parting and time zones is another one. So uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, for national companies uh, during peak periods where you're trying to do some, you know, very advanced day parting, um, one of the current limitations of the AdWords platform is that day parting is done based on the time zone of the account and not necessarily based on the time zone of the users. You know, one of the things we like to look at is your own customer data. And starting there, even offline, uh, before you start uh, tinkering with the geotargeting settings. Um, so looking at demographics, looking at where your customers are from, um, there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from that uh, that is, you know, ultimately going to lead to better, better business decisions. So one of the things we've seen, so store sales data, um, CRM data. So you have information on your customers, you know what zip codes they come from, um, you know what areas, we know where you, you know, you know based on proximity, um, Customers that have the most, you know, propensity to um, uh, to buy and, and to show up in store. Uh, automotive dealers. Here's an example where where they get these pump in and pump out reports, uh, where you can actually see from the manufacturers the zip codes that are contributing to sales uh, for your dealership as well as for your competitors. Um, so you might be able to find pockets of opportunity where there's untapped zip codes or maybe zip codes where people are using going to multiple locations. Uh, and not necessarily to one one dealership, and that's you know that could be an opportunity area um, to go you know to go after more more aggressively. Um, and ultimately, it's about integrating this data into your campaigns uh, and into your your targeting settings. Um, another you know uh, here's some anonymized data that we've we've seen from uh, put together from some client of ours is based on the own their uh, their own student data, um, looking at uh, where people are searching and where they're submitting leads, whether they're at work. Uh, or where they're at home, and looking at different performance indicators. So um, I think the graphics are a little bit too small to read here, but uh, the first one was volume, the second was conversion rate. Uh, these red graphs here is, is based on uh, pages per visit, uh, and identifying those variances between markets. And I think what a lot of advertisers focus on is where they get the most volume and focusing there, um, but it's also about efficiency. So there might be smaller markets that don't have as much volume or suburbs that aren't um, you know, don't drive as many leads as, as downtown, uh, but the performance is better or the conversion rate is better for whatever reason, or the, whether it's more relevant or, um, or there's just less competition. So oftentimes, you know, you want to find those pockets of opportunity and, you know, looking at, uh, looking at performance differences 
making some of those decisions. So you might be willing to pay higher in some of these, you know, smaller markets. Uh, you know, you're trying to squeeze more out of less volume, but ultimately that comes most most efficient. So uh, again, this is one trend we usually see is um, clients. You want to focus on your biggest markets, and certainly you always want to focus on your biggest markets. Um, but certainly performance, conversion rate, CPA, and, and some of the other metrics are a lot more relevant to driving those, those bidding decisions. Uh, so digital data, uh, obviously, whether you've been doing advanced geotargeting or not, um, the reporting that you have about your customers in analytics uh, is invaluable to, to driving some of those decisions. So looking at your site traffic today, looking at performance differences between markets, um, looking at demographics and interest reports in Google Analytics, uh, and then also within AdWords. So for the for the half of you that raised your hands, or, you know, as current AdWords advertisers, um, there's a wealth of data within your account about performance by market, by campaign, uh, even down to you know performance by ad group by market. Um, even if you're not doing a lot of this uh, fancy geotargeting. So the good news is a lot of that data is already there. So uh, one recent feature that was that was added to AdWords reporting, uh, proximity dimensions. Um, so you can look at traffic by how close people are to those physical locations uh, and what the performance differences are. So, um, you know, you see a decrease in conversion rate as people get further away. Um, you might want to hone in on some of the radius targeting that you currently have. And you might want to also look at, you know, bid modifiers. If there's, you know, where you find that cutoff, if it's five miles or if it's 15 miles uh, where you see the best performance, you know, that, that's going to influence how you actually set those things up. And one thing I would also always want to caution is, you know, looking at different markets differently. You know, so a rural market, you might want to target within a 25 mile radius, um, but if you, you know, in an urban setting, uh, you, you might be within one mile or within, you know, one and a half miles uh, where that's actually working. Um, so location extension performance is another. So for those multi-local clients that are integrated with Google My Business, um, you also get location level reporting. So if you have top performing stores or top performing markets, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can, again, find that information and make sure you're focusing on, uh, on the areas that are performing best. Um, and again, one thing I would always do is, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff in the interface, but exporting that data uh, and running some analysis. So it can be a little bit tough when you're looking at a huge list of, you know, a thousand locations to figure out, um, you know, what those variances actually uh, actually are that, you know, that influence performance. Um, so one thing we like to do is just looking at columns as a percentage of the total. So instead of looking at absolute values for CTR or absolute values for conversion rates, look at it in terms of variance from the average. So if you take, um, you know, any one, of these, uh, any one of these locations and you look at the conversion rate relative to the average, then you can segment things in terms of the top performing tier, low performing tiers, and underperforming tiers. Uh, and set bids accordingly. Um, you can always get extremely granular, um, but you also have to think about scale, and that's that's one way that we found to, to kind of take a ton of this really granular information and aggregate it in order to make better overall decisions. For those of you that don't spend much time or any time working with an AdWords, with AdWords accounts, um, first thing I'll say is that location extensions, if you've never heard of them, are a feature where you can essentially add an address to your ads. Um, this is actually hugely important because four and five, from a study that we've done within the past year, um, four and five or 80% of consumers want ads that are customized to their city, their zip code, or their immediate surroundings. So it's hugely important to have something like a phone number or something like an address that you can utilize with, an, with a location extension incorporated into your advertising efforts. Um, so another feature is geo-dimension reporting. So again, this is available. Um, whether you're doing granular geotargeting or not, um, all of this data lives within your account. So um, pulling dimension data, again, doing so at the campaign level, um, obviously countries, some of these, uh, you know, at a, at a higher level, but, you know, you actually do get city level, um, metro level, as well as, you know, even down to the zip code if Google can identify it. Um, and and we'll, get, we'll get to this a little further when we talk about the different settings. Um, but we can even look at the location type. So whether it's targeting based on a physical location or a location of interest. So someone that was maybe outside of that specific location who was searching on geo-modified terms, um, we can actually look at performance based on how that, um, how certain types of search query works, uh, search queries work versus others. 
Um, so again, this is really good news. If you're not doing all of this stuff, um, the data behind it is still there within your accounts uh, to, to inform some of those decisions. Now, Dan, you've walked through a few different reporting capabilities when it comes to, to locations. What's encouraging is there is tons and tons of data that you can, that a person can utilize to determine how effective their geotargeting efforts are. Um, at the same time, there's, there's a risk for, for drowning. So if you had to choose one report to start with, out of all the reports we've talked about so far, do you have a favorite? Uh, I would say starting with the geo dimensions. Um, you know, location extensions is, gets really granular. You're looking down at the location level. Uh, again, oftentimes that's, you know, so much micro data, there's, there's, it's tough to make larger decisions based on that. Um, what we'll typically do is, is take this geographic data here, export all of this, and run some pivot tables. Um, so again, sometimes looking at the campaign level, if you have a really large e-commerce, you know, campaign, um, maybe you want to segment off branded versus non-branded. So finding different ways to kind of slice and dice the data and aggregate it. Um, I like this geo dimension report just because it kind of gives you the kitchen sink of data. Uh, and then you can go and, and run some pivot tables and play around with it and figure out where the most statistically significant data actually actually is. Cool. Um, so uh, again, third party data and keyword research tools. Um, Google Trends, um, you know, this is one that can be a little bit more difficult to do at, uh, um, at scale since you kind of need to look one keyword at, at a time. Um, but it does give you a lot of, uh, you know, um, data around regional interests. Um, in this case, it's not absolute volume, but it's, it's really more an index number of um, which cities have the highest propensity um, to search for those terms relative to other traffic in those markets. Um, so if you're trying to find markets that are more perceptive to your products or, or that potentially have a, you know, a higher opportunity to convert, um, that's definitely one way to, one way to drill that down. Um, there's some options within trends to export some of that data um, to, to look at it at, at scale and, and across multiple keywords. Um, some other features that we're really excited about within the Google Keyword Planner um, is just, you know, when you do pull down, uh, it, it's a little bit more scalable because you can put together a large list of, of keywords across different categories and then aggregate some of that data by market. Um, so we actually do get estimated visits um, broken down at the different levels. So we can do this by state, we can do it by DMA, um, you know, congressional district, I know for, uh, um, you know, for political advertisers, county, municipality. Um, you can also just do this if you're trying to, trying to look at differences between a handful of markets uh, and you set those in the keyword planner as the markets that you're going after. And you can also just see this breakdown um, by the markets you care about and not necessarily by everywhere in the United States. Um, so again, a lot of a lot of cool tools to figure out where the where the volume actually is uh, to influence those decisions before you start uh, bidding and, and playing around with your settings. Um, so uh, next step, local measurement. So as we're doing local targeting and and focused on on driving the locations, even again um, for this is the one area of the presentation that's less relevant to those ecom pure plays. Um, but measuring local is something, ex you know, that's extremely important. It's what every advertiser has always been trying to crack is how does online influence offline. So uh, again, location extension reporting um, and, you know, those proximity reports kind of tells you how, um, which campaigns uh, have the most propensity to drive people to store um, versus, uh, versus online. Um, another one, store visit tracking. So uh, recently released from Google. Um, something that's, uh, that's still in beta, um, but very, very exciting for those omni-channel companies uh, where Google is actually able to determine um, based on uh, signed in, people that are signed in on their, uh, on their mobile devices, um, someone that's actually been to a location, spent more than 10 minutes within that location, uh, and tying that back to the click and to the campaigns that actually drove that activity. So, you know, for auto dealers that are measuring traffic or for, you know, stores that are trying to measure, you know, measure visits, um, you know, not quite to the purchase. We've got another, uh, um, another uh, option for doing that that we'll get to in a minute, uh, but actually measuring how many people showed up in a location uh, that were influenced by an online ad. Um, this is the holy grail. This is what we've always wanted to, wanted to figure out. And, and so from our standpoint, we've been estimating a lot of this for years using online actions or indicators of offline behavior. So, measuring the, you know, the, as a conversion or a secondary conversion, people that go to a store locator, people that print a coupon, uh, people that are, um, you know, signing up for email. So some of those secondary conversion metrics 
that in, that indicate offline buying behavior, um, we're actually able to measure you know store store visit tracking. Um, so that's that's something that's really exciting. I think it's going to change uh, a lot of the tactics and a lot of the perceptions of search as being purely a bottom of the funnel e-commerce you know online transaction uh, channel. Quick thing to add to that, um, Dan mentioned at the beginning that that this is this is a beta. Um, this this feature is, while it is publicly, while it has been publicly announced, there is still pretty limited availability, and and there's only a few businesses that are currently utilizing this feature. So there's an opportunity for for you to potentially uh, be part of our testing group. There's certain requirements, uh, but for now, I would say um, because this feature is limited, um, work with, reach out to Dan, reach out to the BeFound Online team um, to uh, explore certain ways that you can potentially get involved with it. Cool. So another thing, uh, you know, looking looking ahead, um, this is a emerging technology that's not widely adopted, but uh, beacons is going to be one of those things we're going to be hearing a lot about uh, in the next few years in terms of measuring what's happening in store. Um, tying that to apps, tying that to um, proximity targeting and 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 mobile usage and Again, measuring what's happening in store and tying that back to online data. Um, there's a lot of really exciting things that are happening um, that's going to really increase the the way that we're able to measure what's happening offline. And that's really going to be game changing when we talk about how we prioritize budgets, how we how we spend online, what the calls to action are, how much we focus on online transactions versus offline transactions once we're able to measure it. Um, so one really exciting piece that uh, that we've started to use is Live ramp, and there's there's other technologies like this as well. Um, data onboarding companies, um, where you can take that uh, POS system data, those store level transaction, that loyalty information, um, upload that, and uh, we could spend a full hour talking about the process of how this works. Um, but they're actually able to match that up uh, to click IDs from AdWords campaigns and from other digital media campaigns. Uh, so you know that customer, they paid with a credit card. We know they're their name and uh, and their and their zip code, um, and using anonymous all anonymized data. Um, so this is sounds a little bit creepy to those of us that aren't marketers, um, but it is fully uh, fully compliant because um, again we're looking at aggregated data, um, but we're actually able to pull in store transaction level data at the keyword level. Um, so looking at what what you made versus in e-commerce, and looking at the people that have clicked on the ads, gone to a store and made a purchase. Uh, you can actually import that back into the platform. So we're able to do that with our search platform of, of choice, Marin Software, um, where we can look at offline transactions and online transactions and a blended return on ad spend. So for us, this is game changing in terms of what local means to our, our campaigns, especially when we're looking at omni-channel. Uh, and again, once we have the measurement in place, the tactics, the optimization, the, the way that we use those tools within Google uh, is going to be completely completely transformed. I will briefly mention that um, I think last year or so Google also released a conversion import feature um, and I'll, I'll explain it really quickly um, with, with an auto dealer. Imagine someone who wants to buy a car, they're probably going to spend a lot of time doing their research online, go to the site, potentially request a quote from say Honda's, that, Honda's website and then maybe show up to the dealership in person. From there, um, if they were to buy a car, then that, similar to what Dan just said, um, that auto dealer would be able to upload that offline purchase back into AdWords to create a more holistic picture of the value that online advertising is driving for, for your specific business. And so by working with the BeFound Online team, you'll be able to, to determine what platforms make the most sense for your business and your goals. Cool stuff. More coming. Um, so another another thing to look at is just performance by device and breaking that down. So when we talk about local activation, obviously mobile is uh, very local in in nature. Um, even though it's uh, mobile transactions are are becoming more and more important for for e-com businesses. Um, but looking at performance by device, looking at those KPIs and breaking that by, breaking that down by device, um, I think with enhanced campaigns, a lot of advertisers. Um, you know, pull pull the trigger to to attenuate those bids on on mobile, just based on looking at you know one set of goals or e-commerce goals. Um, so when we're looking at all of those KPIs, and especially as we're looking at at store visits, um, mobile is becoming a lot more important. But you know, 
we, we talk about wanting to look across devices and, and look at look at customers, but we also need to have different expectations for performance based on those different devices, uh, and making sure that we have you know the right customer experience as well as the right expectations in terms of what the metrics should be should look like. Just in case anyone doesn't have a clear understanding, Dan, can you explain what a conversion is? Uh, sure, a conversion any sort of uh, online event, so whether it's a e-commerce transaction, store locator, or coupon print or in the case of LiveRamp, an actual store transaction could be registered as a, as a conversion. And it's ultimately up to you to, to determine what specific event you want or action you want to track. All right, so we've gone through data uh, collection, we've gone through measurement, now let's talk about actual tactics and techniques, what we promised in the webinar, um, putting that towards the end to keep, uh, keep everybody in, uh, engaged here. Um, so let's talk about some of our favorite tactics. Um, and campaign setup ideas that, uh, that, you know, that really puts localization into practice. So one of the things before we go and set up campaigns, and oftentimes we're inheriting campaigns that have, that have already be, been built, um, but one of the biggest issues that we've seen when we take on new clients is that a lot of the digital campaigns are really built based off offline business rules or, or business conditions that aren't necessarily optimal for running a digital campaign at scale. So an example of that would be, you know, territories for different local franchisees. So, um, you know, PMA or primary marketing areas where a certain auto dealer is assigned to these zip codes or, you know, there's multiple, um, multiple locations within the, same, uh, within the same neighborhood and trying to take these kind of offline business rules that work well for direct marketing um, or direct mail because you don't want five postcards going to the same person from five different reps. That makes a lot of sense in the offline world, um, but in the online world, you know, we really want to build campaigns uh, that are based on customers and what's the best customer experience. So oftentimes, you know, especially within a market, and I'm, I guess, very geocentric since I live in Chicago, but a lot of people who work downtown and do most of their shopping and searching while at work don't live there. And if they're looking for something offline or if they're looking for um, a student center for their kids or if they're you know, looking to, looking to pick something up before they go home. Um, oftentimes they want to shop near their home even though they're doing their research downtown. So as much as we always preach be getting very granular and, uh, you know, and, and targeted and, and micro-segmenting different markets, um, oftentimes you want to look at your customers and how they behave. Uh, you know, back to that example of where they live versus where they work. Um, and in some cases it makes sense to step back and be more, uh, less targeted in terms of how we're trying to segment things by location. So in practice, uh, if, you, if you look at, uh, sort of to kind of define the title of the side, geo campaigns would be, um, you know, you have 120 locations. Uh, so oftentimes, uh, first time setting up an AdWords account, you think, well, we have to have 120 separate budgets for each location and uh, the same keywords in 120 different campaigns replicated and targeted to each market. Um, now, that sometimes those are requirements. If the business requirements is absolutely to have separate budgets, um, but there's a lot of constraints that you get when you set things up that way. So one, uh, it's more difficult to aggregate data. You've got 120 instances of the same keyword. Um, another is, you know, market level conditions. So uh, a restaurant franchise we work with, um, you know, they had certain locations that were near big events over the summer. So, uh, you know, a, a concert series at a stadium nearby and, you know, traffic in, in three locations were just through the roof for a three-day period. Um, and oftentimes, you know, you, that's information you can get at the local level, um, but if you have a thousand locations, it's very difficult to scale that and to say, you know, let's, let's spend $20 more per day on these three locations. Um, so a more optimal setup uh, is creating campaigns that are targeted to all of those locations, and we'll go through some ways that we can still customize those campaigns and still have that local experience while, while managing it more at, uh, at scale. So, you know, our recommendation, you know, there isn't one way to set up campaigns. Um, we often lean towards the multi-local campaign. So, you know, a, a campaign structure that's targeted to all of those locations, um, you know, and, and customized. Um, but there isn't really, you know, an optimal way to do it. It depends on the business. It depends on the, you know, the requirements of uh, budgeting. Uh, but ultimately, we always want to make that push for, you know, what are the optimal conditions for advertising at scale and optimizing within AdWords? as opposed to just directly trying to translate those offline business rules and create campaigns around those. Um, that's, that's where we've seen a lot of, a lot of missed opportunity. 
Um, so one way to scale that, uh, dynamic copy insertion. So I think every advertiser knows about dynamic keyword insertion where you can take the keyword from the ad and or the, the keyword and actually place that into the ad. Um, we can do that with, um, you know, in a couple different ways with localization. So we can insert the city, the state, the DMA. Um, so we could have one campaign targeted to five states. And if you're searching from Indiana, the ad copy is going to say Indiana or even at the, at the city level or, or even down to the zip code level. Um, so you can also scale that with those location extensions. So linking up to your Google My Business Center and that, and that feed. Um, Google is actually going to serve based on where that user is, based on the context of the device that they're using, uh, and, the, and the proximity, pulling in that, uh, you know, the closest store location. So all of this can be done at scale without actually having to create 100 or 1,000 different sub-campaigns uh, to target that copy. So again, uh, even though we sometimes push for those multi-local campaigns that don't look as granular from the surface, um, you can still get really granular and extremely relevant um, to the, you know, to each individual searcher based on the context of the device and the location that they're in. One quick thing to add is it's important to also think about these tips from a mobile perspective. We're going to talk about mobile a little bit in a sec, um, but it's hugely important because if you think about a 5-inch screen or a 4-inch screen that you have with a smartphone versus an 11, 13, 15-inch screen with a desktop, being able to be at home, be on the go, be in a store, be at work, and see an ad with, with a call, with a phone number, with, a, with an address. Um, one is going to end up taking up a good amount of real estate or a good amount of space on that screen, so it makes your business that much more prevalent and prominent when people are looking for you on smartphones. And secondly, it's that much more convenient. It's much easier for me to click on a phone number within an ad or click on a directions button within an ad than to um, open the ad, see the address, or go to the website, see the address, and navigate back to Google Maps or something like that to search. Um, so these are, these are not only beneficial from, from a geo-targeting and being relevant perspective, but also from a convenience perspective. All right, here's another fun one, bid by weather. So, you know, there's, there's a number of, uh, number of cool things that you can actually do with weather conditions. Um, something we've actually done for clients, uh, for some travel clients, is inserting weather into the copy. So you can geo-target uh, to a certain market. Um, highly relevant for Chicago today where we're, I think we're in the teens. Um, you could actually write copy saying it is X degrees in Chicago. Why not plan a vacation? Um, that was kind of crappy copy, but it was, we came up with much better copy. Uh, that's actually pulling in localized weather conditions uh, directly into the copy. So that's, um, that's another cool way to customize things at scale. Um, and the other is actually bidding by weather. So, uh, for restaurant clients, uh, we know based on what the temperature range is and based on market. So, you know, that's, that's another one of those things where you really have to be geo-specific for this stuff to make sense. In Chicago, 35 degrees. Right now, I would see people wearing shorts walking outside. I would be one of them. And I'd be willing to walk five blocks to a restaurant because it's a balmy 35 degrees. You know, in Miami, where it was 45 degrees last week, um, I think the entire city shut down. So, you know, it's, again, you have to be very geo-relevant in terms of understanding what, you know, what different conditions mean for each market. Um, but from a restaurant standpoint, you know, especially if you don't have online ordering or if you don't have delivery, you know that if it's under a certain degree, um, people aren't going to show up. They're not going to be at the register. They're not, you know, they're not eating out. So saving those budgets uh, and pulling back, and this is where, you know, efficiency comes in, you can save a lot of money by not advertising on generic terms, right? So you might find a keyword like restaurant or um, drink specials works, works really well, but that really only works well when people are willing to, um, you know, willing to get in the car and go. Uh, and oftentimes people searching for restaurants are actually looking to, you know, to, to order online. So again, creating some of these conditions where um, we're bidding smarter, uh, saving money, but also if it's a sunny day, uh, it's above 75 degrees and, and sunny, um, bid more aggressively, go, you know, uh, get more aggressive in the display network to create demand. Uh, and again, use those geo conditions uh, to drive the optimization of your campaign. Now, Dan, the, I think the restaurant example was an excellent one. What about for a business that doesn't have a physical location and is just online? Is there, are there ever any instances where it may make sense to bid by weather? Are there ever any business types where that could be relevant? Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, so uh, we actually have an example with an online retailer uh, that, um, you know, that sells 
boots and snow boots and, and snowshoes. So, um, and, you know, and, and jackets. So yeah, when it gets cold, starting to bid more heavily on winter jackets. Uh, and again, that's something you really can do at, at scale based on different campaign types uh, and focusing on, uh, you know, on different, different products and services that are, uh, you know, that are more relevant when it's cold. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways to take, again, these tactics and, uh, and apply it to, to every, you know, every type of business. Um, so this is another one. So geo modifiers and, and geo bin modifiers. Uh, I would say this is uh, this feature is really the culmination of all of that. You know, all of that research in terms of which markets perform best. So again, leveraging that customer data of uh, where you know where most of your customers are coming from, whether it's you know looking at at volume and, and performance differentiators in, in analytics or using the Google, Google Keyword Planner. Um, once you set up that geo-targeting, um, this is where you can really push bids in the markets that are performing really well, uh, and then pull bids to, to bid less aggressively where you see, you know, less performance. So oftentimes, uh, marketers want to get really aggressive with cutting things that are underperforming, and, you know, if underperforming means your conversion rate is 30% less, it doesn't mean you need to turn it off. It doesn't mean that's bad volume. It just means it's volume that you probably want to pay a little bit less for. So, you know, I, I think this is a really, really important tool because um, what we always don't want to do, we don't want to miss opportunity. We don't want to lose opportunity, but we still need to be efficient. Um, so the bid modifiers allows us, again, at scale. Um, so not having to have 50 different campaigns if we want to, if we know that 50 states perform differently, we can still bid differently in any given market. Um, so we've seen that from a competitive standpoint where, a $1 bid in Nebraska works just fine and we're in position 2.5 and, and showing the way we want to. Uh, but in New York, that same bid, uh, with more competition, we're in position 7 and 8 and, and getting a trickle of the volume that's available there. So um, again, competition variances between markets, uh, performance variances, uh, there's a lot of contributing factors in terms of what kind of bid adjustment you actually should set, whether it's you know decreasing or increasing. Um, but taking all of that data, uh, aggregating it, you know, we've got some tools that we built that that helps us kind of look at all of those different sources and 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 make some aggregate level decisions. Um, and uh, again, doing that uh, doing that at scale, because uh, I I don't think a lot of us have 48 hours in the day to to go to weather.com for each market and say, all right, today's looking pretty good, let's boost bids. Um, so you, leveraging these tools, um, leveraging AdWords scripts and, and some of these advanced tactics allows you to set some of those business rules and, again, um, employ that at, at scale to drive results. Now, one thing that I've seen in my time at Google um, is from working with, with thousands of businesses and advertising or advising them on their advertising efforts, there are, there are several that will specifically target the United States with their advertising efforts. And for some, that makes sense. There are definitely some specific efforts where it makes sense to, do, to have a nationally targeted campaign. Um, generally what we see and what I've seen is those who take the time to analyze their data, dive into some of the reports that, that Dan looked at earlier, um, and make their geo-targeting that much more, that much more narrow, narrowly focused, usually see a bump in performance. At the end of the day, we want to get the right message in front of the right person at the right time. And by just having a blanket campaign, it's not, we may not always take those different user contexts into consideration. And so really internalize some of these, these tactical recommendations that, that we're making. Yeah. So another fun example that just uh, popped in my head is, is source markets. So for in the travel and tourism industry, um, oftentimes uh, you're going to have that customer data. You, um, you know where the majority of your customers travel from. So by identifying those source markets, um, you know, again, leveraging your own offline data, um, you can bid more aggressively in the markets where you know, you know there's potentially uh, direct flights um, as opposed to, you know, markets that just have kind of a, a trickle of the trickle of the volume or, you know, less likelihood that they're actually going to um, going to show up. Um, so, uh, you know, some of the some of the basic targeting options within within AdWords when you go to, um, I think actually you have to click a button that says uh, advanced, but uh, the kind of the built in, um, you know, a lot of different options in terms of how you slice and dice it. So whether it's you know, searching for a city or DMA, um, radius level targeting, um, location groups is something uh, something that was newly added within within AdWords. 
Um, so you can actually set, uh, set some modifiers based on household income tiers, um, which, is, uh, which is, you know, pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> um, so you can actually set some of those location targets, um, you know, based on, uh, based on some of that, uh, some of that consumer, consumer data. Um, you know, some other advanced targeting is um, who, who you're targeting, whether you're targeting locals, visitors, um, we've had some clients that are, you know, that are very local in nature, um, but there's oftentimes people out of market that are researching. So uh, using bid modifiers or, or geo keywords, um, they are uh, out of market but searching for options within the market or because they're either traveling there um, or they're vacationing and they're looking for things to do. Um, so again, understanding I was in Mexico last week and obviously um, I wasn't researching Mexican villas while I was in Mexico because uh, I was staying in one. So uh, again, understanding, you know, if you have people that are out of market, you can actually create campaigns just targeted to them, um, targeted to, you know, with ad copy that's really targeted to people that are out of state. Um, so again, you know, we often like to start being a little bit more exclusive versus only trying to hone in on a really small target because we just get less data and less information that way. Um, but most importantly, just, you know, evolving uh, once you get that information um, and, and focusing on the areas that are actually working best. One quick note to add, um, the vast majority of the screenshots that, that you've seen throughout this content are directly from AdWords. And so what's nice is as you do your analysis and get a better understanding of how different markets are performing, um, you'll be able to really manage and optimize your advertising efforts based on geo within one, within one centralized location. All right. Um, so geo modified keywords. Um, this is this is one area when you talk about geo targeting. This is where everybody used to start is building out big keyword lists based on location names. Um, one of the things we've seen is that the volume is actually uh, decreasing over time. Um, part of that is Google is just making people lazy because uh, you're used to getting localized results um, based on your IP. Uh, so. Oftentimes people are, are searching locally, but they aren't necessarily using local keywords because they're used to seeing those results. That being said, um, long tail keywords make a lot of sense. There's usually some efficiency to be found there. Um, and again, identifying certain markets and certain words that work better. Um, we're going to be sharing this deck. There's a, there's a link to a keyword geo modifier tool um, that we use here that's really cool. You put in the zip code or your location uh, and a radius and you can get a full list of, of geo keywords for every city and suburb um, to help modify and build out those keyword lists. Um, and another thing that we've done uh, that's again kind of reverse engineering how you use demographic targeting within AdWords uh, is geo databases or zip code databases. So um, we purchase and I mean I think it costs 150 bucks for an updated list you know for the year. Um, we get uh, based on census data data down to the zip code. So uh, you know whether it's population demographics, male versus female, average income, average payroll, all of those, all of those kind of census data down to the zip code level. Well, we can, you know, when we have clients that are, you know, interested in a certain demographic, we can use those tools to identify those markets that actually match those demographics and create bid modifiers based on that. So there's certainly ways to take a lot of external data and use that to determine going back, you know, a few slides to those location modifiers. Um, there's a lot of different parameters that you can use, whether it's, the demographics or you know the, the performance from your from your campaigns. Now when it comes to geo targeting Dan, how narrow is too narrow? I uh, it's I mean it certainly depends on the footprint. You know, we've gone uh, often oftentimes and, and the targeting has gotten a lot better. Um, several years ago when we got really granular and we could draw those cool little maps, I know that feature went away, but um, oftentimes when you get too honed in and, and too tight um, you're limiting a lot of volume. So, you know, again, I, we don't want to not show in a lot of cases, but it's just what we're willing to pay to show in those, in those markets. So I actually, as much as we're talking about different ways to get a lot more granular, um, we usually like to go at the DMA level because again, it gives you a better opportunity for more volume, but you can still segment within a DMA. You know, you don't have to bid on Chicago or Chicagoland. Um, you can still bid, differently for each of the different, you know, neighborhoods or, or sub-markets within, within the city. Yep, so as you all make various optimizations to your geotargeting strategies, um, be sure to pay attention to metrics such as the volume of impressions, the number of clicks, the number of conversions, et cetera, um, based on these different changes so that you make sure that you're not limiting yourself too much. 
Uh, and then mobile. Mobile is local. <laughs> so everything you can do to activate, um, activate and, and segment what you're doing on, on mobile, whether it's mobile preferred ads, mobile landing pages. Again, we could talk for eight hours on responsive design and, and mobile experiences. Um, but even, even getting you know, down to the ad group level with mobile bid modifiers, um, different campaigns perform differently. Uh, you know, local demand versus e-com demand differs by product category and differs by market. Um, so again, there isn't one thing that's going to work. Um, so uh, we're getting very close to wrapping up on, on time here. Again, apologize for those technical difficulties. Um, so you know, key takeaways here, um, start with your data first. Don't go to the features and start playing with it and start changing bid modifiers. Um, I, I think my whims are really good, but I trust data a whole lot more. Um, so start with your data and use that to inform those, those decisions. Um, and things change, whether it's seasonality or campaign performance or your ad copy changing. Um, don't do this once. Look at this every quarter. Look at this every month. You know, look at it in season versus out of season versus at, at peak times. Um, remember that localization is also a moving target. Um, so don't set those bid modifiers and, and sit in it for a year. Um, and again, segment everything by campaign. Not, a, not every category is going to perform the same. Um, keep testing and, and get more granular. So um, of all of the accounts that we've in, inherited and, and audited, you know, of all these local, local targeting features, adoption is still really, really small relative to all the features that are available. So the name of the game here is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's small ball. We're trying to hit a lot of singles. Um, you know, there's very, a lot less low-hanging fruit nowadays. So it's all about how we can get a little bit better, a little bit smarter, a little bit more efficient. Uh, and localization is one of the best ways to do that. Um, so we're very, uh, I think, at the end of the hour. Um, again, wanted to thank everybody for joining. I'm happy to take some questions here. Uh, I've got my contact information up. Uh, and happy to answer you know, specific questions or if anybody would like to reach out. Um, and all right, uh, Grace is showing me some Questions. All right. Uh, so, one question about uh, car listings and and how um, you know with inventory changing uh, changing daily or um, you know radius targeting that changes frequently. So yeah, there's um, there's a lot of cool tools out there um, that can take feed based information. So another, another thing we didn't go into very deeply right now is um, business data within AdWords. So some of the feed automation and some of the, you know, the bid by weather that, that we're doing with AdWords scripts, um, you can actually upload those feeds to, to AdWords. Um, there's also some third-party tools, and uh, I will reach out after this, uh, other automation features that can take daily feed data and update, you know, update to, the, to the minute. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do at scale, even when it's moving really quickly. Um, another example of that is um, call centers. So we have a partner we work with that has, um, that gets to the, you know, every 10 minutes gets call center data. And if, uh, if the call center is understaffed and, and there's a five to 10 minute wait time um, for an agent to pick up the phone, you can actually turn off those bids for an hour. And when everybody gets back from lunch, uh, you can actually turn those bids back up when the call center is there. So there's a lot that you can do with real-time data and feeds um, using using the API or using you know using the business data features within within AdWords. Yep. And this isn't this specific statement isn't specific to geotargeting, but there is one advertising solution called Dynamic Remarketing that is probably relevant to that to ch changing inventory. So if imagine if you went to um, Zappos.com, looked at some shoes, left the page, and then when you were browsing the internet, you saw an ad specifically for the pair of shoes that, you're look, that you were looking at. Um, that is one example of dynamic remarketing. Historically, it's been an advertising solution that's been unique to, to retailers um, and e-commerce businesses, um, but we have recently expanded it to be available to businesses of, of multiple verticals, including the automotive vertical. And so, um, you'll be able to work, if it's a feature of interest, if it makes sense for your business, you'll be able to work with the Be Found Online team to get that specific advertising solution set up. So again, thanks again. Uh, thank you to Michael for joining us today, and uh, we, will, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.